Just moments ago in South Carolina, Donald Trump accused the sitting president of the United States of hating black people. It's the only thing he's really been good at his entire career. You know what that is? Being a racist, because he's a racist. Biden spent years palling around with notorious segregationists. Donald Trump made that remark in South Carolina while making a pitch to the core of the Biden coalition, black voters. Now, Donald Trump failed to mention a few important things there. He was the guy who played footsie with white nationalists after Charlottesville. Donald Trump was the guy who had to be asked over and over again to distance himself from David Duke, the literal grand wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. And the actual Trump sales pitch to black voters was even simpler than that. Biden bad, Trump good. And I'm thrilled to be here tonight with Crooked Joe Biden's absolutely worst nightmare. Hundreds of proud black conservative American patriots. You shouldn't be doing well, because honestly, they've done a lousy job for you. They've done a lousy job for you. They've been done a lousy job for everybody. But for black Americans, they have done a very poor job. If you want strong borders, safe neighborhoods, rising wages, good jobs, great education, and the return of the American dream, then congratulations, you are a Republican. It's pretty simple. Trump says that he's not going to take the black vote for granted. He says under the last four years of his presidency, he achieved the lowest African-American unemployment rate ever recorded. But it turns out that's not true. The all-time low for black unemployment was set by, you guessed it, Joe Biden in April of 2023 at 4.8 percentage points. And Trump also added this. Unlike racist Joe Biden, I've spent my entire life working hand-in-hand -hand with black Americans to create jobs, build buildings, invest in our communities. I want to tell you, a black worker is a great worker. All right, well, let's put aside treating black people like a monolith, which he did over and over again. Donald Trump's career has been marked by a detailed history of racism. He was sued in the 1970s for housing discrimination based on race. He settled that suit. And Trump also gave a pretty stunning reason for why he says black voters like him now. I got indicted for nothing, for something that is nothing. And a lot of people said, that that's why the black people like because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. I want to start with Republican strategist Cher Michael Singleton, along with former communications director for Vice President Harris and former senior advisor to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Ashley Etienne. <laughs> I am going to start Sorry. with you, Ashley. Because no, no, thank you. you. Know thank you. <laughs> I, think he needs his, I think he needs to defend his party and the head the of his idea party. That Trump being indicted multiple times makes him simpatico with black people in this country is what? I mean, here's the thing. I'm, I, I couldn't be more, and I, I, I'm going to take the privilege of speaking for all black people. I couldn't be more offended by that statement. Um, and I just find it very rich. And here's the other thing. I just, him saying black the way that he did, it just felt mocking in some sense. But here's here's the here's there's, what, there's an added emphasis. Yeah, there I mean, just the emphasis on the beat. But but here's the here's the real reality is you know Trump can try to to pander to black folks uh, while insulting us at the same time in the same breath. But it, you know black folks aren't like any other voter, and voters really want to know at the end of the day what have you done for me lately. And if you and that's where Joe Biden actually has the advantage. To your point, four percent unemployment among uh, African Americans, fourteen percent when when Trump was president. Joe Biden created fifteen million jobs. You know, just canceled one billion dollars in student loan debts, which really is going to set up a lot of Black folks to 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 create generational wealth. And that's what it boils down to. So this, to me, is just you know, uh, is pandering. It's it's it's. You know, it's at its worst, um, but it's not going to have a major it's, impact. Chair Michael, you know the person who started this organization <laughs> that Trump was speaking at. Is this what he had in mind when he created a space? And, and let's be honest, there are black conservatives. Yeah, yeah. There needs to be black conservatives. Mm -hmm. But is this what he had in mind when he created this space? I mean, look, 
I think that African Americans do have some dislikes about the current iteration of things, politically speaking. Uh, Trump mentioned the immigration issue. We've all seen videos and clips out of Chicago, out of uh, New York City. I just talked about that on Jake's show a couple of days ago. Uh, so so, so that, there are some points of contention there. Um, I, I do also think that there is a, some points of contention with black men in, in particular. Uh, and Democrats have actually acknowledged this, that, that they recognize they need to work harder with black men. Now, am I saying that we're going to see a plethora of black men all of a sudden voting for Donald Trump beyond the 12 percent he received in 2020? That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that any decrease in black men in key states like Georgia, perhaps Pennsylvania, these are key battleground states that President Biden won by very slim margins in 2020, that decrease could somehow give Trump some level of a mathematical advantage. But, I mean... There's all of that, and then there's what Trump said mm -hmm. and did tonight. I want to play just one more sure. oh, no, it's a bit word. of what Trump said tonight. Oh, God. <laughs> These lights are so bright in my eyes that I can't see too many people out there. But uh, I can only see the black ones. I can't see any white ones, you see? <laughs> That's how far I've come. That's how far I've come. That's a long, that's a long way, isn't it? Ah, <laughs> uh, we've come a long way together. I mean, I what don't is, even, I don't even what know what that, that means. Mean? Well, I was, I I was waiting for him to throw gold sneakers into the <laughs> well, audience. Speaking I mean, of the gold sneakers, <laughs> speak, speaking of the gold sneakers, I mean, this is part of the conversation mm -hmm. here. This from Trump, you know, I saw conservatives complaining about Biden going and doing that video with black voters and eating a meal with them, the kids were eating fried chicken. They called that pandering. Is any of this, all of this pandering, is, is this the right way to reach black voters in general? Well, I mean, there's no doubt that there's a, there's a clear problem. The party, Democratic Party is having a problem with, with in, in enthousia the enthusiasm gap among black male voters in particular. There's a New York Times article not too mm -hmm. long ago, poll, that showed that Donald Trump's polling at 22 percent with black male voters, with black voters. And, and that set off alarms, obviously, within the party. But here's what I am, you know, seeing. I've met with the party. We sort of had a debrief about what what lessons learned from 2020. I was in the war room, and we were bleeding black male voters 30 days out from the election. Part of what we saw then, I don't think the party is quite yet ready to confront mm. in any sort of robust way. I mean, the, the strategy is, is quite antiquated. They're putting $25 million on television in these ads with the president sitting down having dinner. That's an antiquated strategy. The issue really is that disinformation is disproportionately targeted to black voters as well as youth voters. And that's what we saw dating all the way back to the 2016 election. U.S. intelligence agencies are saying it's going to only get worse this cycle. AI is only going to compound the situation with these deep fakes. So the concern is that the party, for me, is that the party's not really ready to deal with this issue. You can try to deal, address it on the margins with these types of these uh, dinners and these, you know, and ads and $25 million on television. But the reality is the problem is in our feeds. It's the corrosion yeah. within our feeds that we're not ready yet to address. A quick last word to you. Yeah, Sharon. I mean, look, I, I think that black men have legitimate concerns. They have concerns about uh, the state of the economy. They have concerns about uh, economic leverage. And they don't see those answers coming from Democrats. And so Trump is making the message. Again, it doesn't mean that we're going to see 30 percent of black men all of a sudden becoming Republicans. But what it does mean is that Donald Trump is tapping into something that I don't think we can ignore. Well, we'll see how it works out for him. Chair Michael Singleton. Yeah, we certainly will. Ashley Etienne, thank you both very much.